to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Kiko starting as the pink Terran. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the blue Zerg. This is going to be on Goodnight, which again, I think this came in third. It was really close voting in the New Worlds map contest. I recommend going and checking out the back replays. But again, Goodnight, kind of your standard map, natural expansion, mineral only nearby. Uh, the interesting feature, kind of the... Oh, I didn't realize there was an Ursodon that was hallucinated in the middle of the map. Ursadon hallucinated in the middle of the map, double gas here in a four-player map beyond that. I feel like this is just one of those standard, sturdy, it-can-be-played maps. Um, nothing too cheesy about it. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of as far as old-school maps. I don't know. feels like it's just, you know, a good, solid map that was produced that could be played as, like, more of a macro-oriented style across the board just a standard style anyway last game kiko ended up falling to rancor i'm not sure where these matches came from i got these from lml special thanks to him looks like we do have a spawning pool being dropped so a nine pool opener for rancor this is very risky on a four player map so going to use the zerglings to do some scouting i think the hope here is to catch kiko once again going for that fast expansion style build because if you go for a 14 cc you get caught by that nine pool it is essentially just game and we aren't seeing a seal from Kiko putting the barracks on the high ground. That's a, another disadvantage going up against this style of build. First SCV scout moving out. If this overlord spots that SCV, we'll see it's actually might be advantageous here with this overlord moving a position because the drone is going to move to the... I think this is going to be a drone scout because you want those zerglings to potentially get on top of your opponent's base. Unfortunately, the drone going to the upper left-hand corner, this overlord is going to take a while to make uh, to get out here to that natural expansion we do see so the barracks not quite up that overlord scouts the scv so knows location now the zerglings are being produced and this is going to be very difficult for kiko to fight back especially with no front door seal natural expansion also going up from rancor behind this this might be a very fast match so the zerglings moving out i'm wondering if there how much concentration is going to be on this scv there's a lot of ground to cover, keep in mind. So there's that first Marine. Did that? Wow, that was a very fast SCV kill that I couldn't even catch on screen. The Zergling's moving out. SCV's trying to blockade this natural expansion. And this is just additional mine. So this is six. So this is a lot. Even if these Zerglings don't manage to get past these two Marines, this is a lot of lost mining time. And this is a big delay to as far as taking control of that natural expansion. Second barracks being plopped down. It looks like Rancor is going to hold up short because this basically makes those Zerglings worth it in delaying that natural expansion, in delaying mining time and everything else. Kiko just going to hide that SCV up left-hand corner. Actually, it would be, you know what would be creative is if Kiko just tried to proxy something upper left. I don't know. Three Marines still holding. Upon this fourth Marine, I'm wondering if these SCVs and these Marines are going to press forward to go ahead and try to push these Zerglings back. But this is, yeah, significant economic delay. Decent amount of map control. This also allows Rancor to just produce, produce, produce as many drones as he likes in the background. It looks like he is going to go an additional layer before grabbing a third hatch. Single Zergling peeking up briefly, trying to tempt these units out. The barracks currently remaining silent. Because it looks like Kiko, in the midst, perhaps just a panic right here, or maybe just a misbuild. Supply blocked. Actually, sorry, it's Rancor supply blocked right this second. Academy, about halfway finished. Decent saturation at the natural expansion. Zergling's still doing their little dance at the front. But now Kiko, yeah, starting to press forward. Should have enough Marines to go ahead. I mean, you have more Marines than Zerglings, so these Zerglings are going to have to back off. However, Kiko, with that sneaky SCV that was out in the field, is going to be able to wander back, should get all the scouting information required. Unfortunately for Kiko, the layer is up before that natural expansion is even in position. And this Terran oftentimes just assume they're going to have that natural expansion when defending against the Mutalisks. So there's that spire being built. An engineering bay is going to be required, and I'm almost wondering if Kiko's going to opt to, well, looks like just still stick, grabbing some fire bats. Might just go for a front door bust. Before Mutal, if you can just time it 
move some units out there. I think that's what these firebats are indicating. Like, I just want to go for a bus, try to win the game from here, rather than worrying about things from that stage of the game. It looks like Stimpak has been upgraded. Firebats and Marines starting to move out now. A grouping of Zerglings. Rancor, see the, so the Overlord spots it. Now, are we going to see creep colonies to help to defend? Rancor moving two drones down, and that should be sufficient. Well, is it going to be sufficient? Because is this enough time is the next question. Creep colonies in position. The Zerglings, not there to create any sort of delay. There's the sunken colonies being built, but these fire bats look like they're already going to be on top of this natural expansion. The Zerglings flooding out, but keep in mind those fire bats are there to peel from there. But Kiko delaying this a bit. The Zerglings trying to get position around. But the sunken colonies come online, wipe out all of the medic marines. One fire bat remains. One marine remains, and I don't think this is going to be sufficient to defend. So it does have the engineering bay up. But Kiko in a desperate situation now. Because the mutalists are starting to be produced. And I don't think there's just enough bulk to defend against the mutalists that are incoming. Plus, weapon one's being upgraded. The zerglings, with the speed upgrade running across, forcing a lot of these units back. Rancor has full map control, a factory being grabbed. And keep in mind, this is still forcing Kiko to play on one base. A lot of turrets need to be planted to defend because this is going to be a thinner Medic Marine army than would have been otherwise to defend against this. Some turrets, yeah, being planted absolutely everywhere. Looks like an SEV in open field going to lose its life for the cause. However, with that delay in the force of the Sunken Colonies, it looks like the mutilist, the full mutilist count being delayed briefly. However, Rancor very comfortable going ahead and take that 9 o'clock base. And with the mutilists in the air, as long as he has eyes, not only can he go up and do some harassment towards Kiko and force Kiko to stay back, he can also deny Kiko that natural expansion. So this is basically one base versus what will soon be three base Zerg. And I don't know that Rancor even needs to play standard from this stage on. Can just kind of keep these, can pretty much do anything he wants as far as a follow-up. Going up, sees that factory, looking for little holes in the defense. Stringing these marines out, able to pick one off there. I don't think he needs any more mutalisks, but it looks like more mutalisks are being produced. Third hatch at that location, actually grabbing an additional creep colony. So, which suggests a desire to be more aggressive with these mutalisks. Kiko, again, still sitting on two barracks. I'm almost wondering, when is Kiko going to have an opportunity to just move out and even start having an opportunity to take this natural expansion? Might want to just move out with these medic marines now and get some SEVs at low position. Rancor abusing the high ground, loses Immulisks there. Level 1 flyer weapons not quite online yet. Does see that science facility on that corner a little bit I'm not sure if that was over simming or not, but a lot of stims dropped there from Kiko. And more mutilists starting to press towards the front. Some drones not in position there. Third base is up, but not yet operational. Much like the battle cruiser. Irradiate being researched as well. So there actually might be an opportunity for Kiko, although I would expect an additional barracks to, to deal with this, where if an irradiate's dropped and Rancor doesn't Supplement a lot of these units underneath, losing another Mutalisk. With a nice Irradiate and just a push of Medic Marines, might be able to get an opportunity there, but instead Rancor just diving in. Is it... Oops. Sped the game up, did not intend to. I was looking to remove the middle thing, which can't remember. Maybe it's Shift U. But instead, Rancor going ahead and just wiping out all of Medic Marines that are on the field. Also, the science vessel is not long for life. As soon as it spawns, potentially Mutalisks or maybe even a Scourge follow-up can wipe that out. 9 o'clock base, still silent, but with all these Medic Marines gone... Sorry, the science vessel already snuck out. I was like looking for like, oh, it's the D-key. Where's D here? The D-key. This is finally a third barracks inside Kiko's base, a fourth barracks as well. You can see it's just complete defense from here. Rancor moving up a lot of Zerglings. All Rancor has to do is drone up from this stage and should win the match, making the way towards Hive. Actually grabbing Hive before even the third gas. 
might be an okay play here because a single Dark Swarm with the Lurker tech could also end it. Zergling's actually able to walk right up, take that turret, and actually maybe wants to focus. There's a Radiate. Oof. So here's kind of that window I was talking about where that Irradiate's dropped, not a lot of Zerglings. If Kiko had an attack force here, if Rancor hadn't just wiped it out, he might have been able to just sneak out and push an attack from here, maybe to, I don't know, maybe wipe out the third, something along those lines. But I don't know that he has enough troops to get it done now. There's three something colonies there. <clears throat> is still moving out with those medic marines. Lurker tech is up. If lurkers can get in position at that 9 o'clock base, that should be sufficient to defend it. Overlord going to get picked off for the corner, and Kiko looks like just happy to go ahead and back off, maybe finally take a natural expansion. This feels like way too little, way too late, though. Honestly, I feel like it's now or never if you're going to do something to get back in this match. Hive Tech is up. I don't see a Defiler Mound anywhere just yet. Additional Hatchery at this location, third gas being grabbed for Rancor. Rancor has got all sorts of gas behind this. The Medic Marine starting to move out in the field. A handful of lurkers, yeah, should be able to defend that 9 o'clock location. And you've got a fourth creep colony being planted at that natural expansion to provide some additional defense right there. So I think Kiko kind of all in at this stage is able to pick off some additional mutalisks. Another overlord actually might get picked off. So small mercies here for Kiko. Some scourge in position. But there, with these three lurkers, this is a very tough base to crack going uphill with just, but a nice defense matrix. Not enough though, the defense matrix. <laughs> that was a, a bit of a fail right there. Sorry, Kiko. That wasn't the, the moment I wanted to highlight for a BSL player. Um, defense matrix moving forward. Unfortunately, the rest of the Marine, Medic Marines going on and just lining up a perfect double shot for the rest of the lurkers. Now Kiko backing off, grabbing that natural expansion. Vessels in the air. Looks like Ultralisk Cavern is up. Rancor is going to have Ultralisks in not too long. Needs to wait on some Overlords to kind of fill out that supply. Third base is running. Actually, this is only a single drone. Yeah, needs to get some more drones in that gas. Kiko just now taking that natural expansion. So this is three base Zerg versus essentially two base Terran. Second starport is up potentially to get a lot of science vessels out. The Medic Marines kind of camping that low ground but i feel like at this stage of things adrenal upgrades upgrading uh, chitinous plating upgrading at this stage of things rancor can just go ahead and get those ultralisks out in the field get a dark swarm maybe get some lurkers behind it and should be able to end the game from there or contrawise can just defend things something i missed dropship unfortunately man nothing going right for kiko here dropship trying to drop some medic marines there and getting picked off by scourge rancor on top of it. And also, unfortunately for Kiko, level 2 weapons, no level 1 armor yet. Which means once Ultralisks and Adrenal Upgrade Zerglings, still going to be very effective in this match overall. Additional Scourge being produced. There are three, there are a handful of science vessels overhead. That dropship delaying uh, a bit of that additional production. There is a slight upgrade advantage for Kiko, so that's at least something. However, as far as tech, as far as gas, as far as slowing Zerg's economy down, uh, Rancor's still in an excellent position. He does have, it looks like, some Ultralisks, some Lurkers. Ooh, those Lurkers were just walking in to fire right there. The Ultras regrouping the Zerglings, swinging around. I don't know that these Science Vessels are long for life. One of them getting taken out. Some nice Defense Matrix. These Ultras going to back off. It looks like one of them going to get irradiated. So the Science Vessel is at least able to buy some time here for Kiko. Some Scourge still looking for those Science Vessels out of position. The Ultras diving in behind this while they're irradiated. But Rancor can still sit behind. I'm looking for Rancor to go ahead and grab additional bases. It looks like he's building a lot of additional hatcheries. Starting to produce Zerglings. Kiko actually not in as bad a position as I expected at this stage of the match. Has some Fire Bats out. Has some Marines out. Still has a Science Vessel count to speak of. Rancor is actually behind in supply overall. And I think that's the difference between having Defilers as part of that attack and or not, really. I still don't see any Defilers on the field. In fact, I don't see a Defiler Mount anywhere. 
I'm just going to try to get it done, it looks like, with Ultralisks alone. This is four creep colonies on the front. Kiko's starting to press this, and an additional creep colony being planted. Lurker's behind that as well. So Kiko's still trying to make this happen. Some Zerglings looking for a run-by attack. The Firebats melting through those Zerglings very, very rapidly, however. A single Ultralisk alongside, but that Ultralisk does not have a lot of health. Looks like Kiko did want to load up a dropship. Science Vessel taken out. Scourge flying behind. Want to try to pick off something. It looks like they're going to get wiped out of the air. And it looks like Kiko setting up to drop some Irradiates and maybe take another shot at this 9 o'clock location. Rancor does need to do something about defending this 9. The Scourge, however, able to take out several Science Vessels. Which hurts for Kiko. But Kiko... Has those four barracks whirling. Does have double starport to get science vessels back out there. Some zerglings running down. Another something colony being built. Some zerglings moving up. No nidus here as yet either. But four ultralisks now out. And only a single science vessel potentially to try to provide that defense. And another dropship incoming. And I don't see any scourge in position to defend it this time. And I don't know that Rancor spotted it. And this is a lot of juicy tech. Evolution Chamber might finish. Okay, two Ultralisks spawning. Is that going to be sufficient? Or are they even going to be aware? Okay, Rancor, I think, realizing it. Starting to pull some units out. Battle Drone. Grouping up. So Kiko <laughs> initially dropping and then just going ahead and pulling back. Now Kiko needs to start thinking about taking a third base. Has managed to stabilize the thing things a little bit. Insanely enough. More Ultralisks flooding out for Rancor. Level 3 Carapace, though. Instead of the usual level 4 or even level 5 that you want to see, the Ultra is starting to group up. Overwhelming some Marines midfield. Oof. Absolutely melting there. And now the question is, is there not enough Science Vessels to drop Irradiates? So now moving up with Science Vessels, looking, but flying overhead, looks like they did not have enough energy. This might be an overwhelming attack force from Rancor. And just pure Ultralis to dive into this natural expansion. Some Firebats alongside. SCVs grouping up to create a wall against the rest of these Ultralis to allow these Marines to try to do as much damage as possible. But the natural expansion dropping a lot of health in the meantime. I like Kiko's defense, though. Rancor moving up the Lurkers. And once Lurkers get to the natural expansion, that's usually all she wrote. A commsat being dropped, but those SCVs now working against the Marines to be able to push up and defend against this. It looks like I missed a drop in the meantime, so it looks like the Ultralis Cavern was wiped out, but that's just not going to be enough. Not going to be sufficient. So Kiko loses Rancor in this game as well. Look for Rancor. I'm hoping to see Rancor again in Season 13 of BSL and to see more exciting matches out of him. Again, if you have not seen it, check out Rancor vs. Grest from last season. I think that was the best set of the series. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, GG's.